This is Sports Matters with Jerry Collin. Jerry Collin. It's so retro. We cover all the biggest sports on the planet. MMA, boxing, snooker, football, darts. You name it and we cover it. Check out all the latest interviews with Jerry and the Stairs weekly on Sports Matters. Welcome to Sports Matters with me, Jerry Collin. I'm joined easily by the greatest snooker player of our time, Stephen Hendry. How's things, my friend? I'm very well, thank you. Good stuff. And uh, you, you've got a quite busy schedule, uh, schedule at the moment, so we do appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. But, um, of course, you've had a glamorous career in snooker. Seven world titles, 11, you know, 147 breaks, numerous ranking titles I think it was 36 ranking titles and 38 no ranking titles tell us where did it all start for you first day Stephen um, I got a small table for my Christmas when, uh, just before my 13th birthday uh, a, a little, little toy snooker table um, I'd never watched snooker before never even never played never knew anything about it so it was a complete surprise as a, as a, as a present and um, but from then on I sort of fell in love with the game and, 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 and obviously improved very quickly you did indeed and like you know, back back in say you know the early eighties, and you know the, the, the snooker was booming back then. You know, you had the likes of Jimmy White, Stephen. You you had like you know Alex Higgins. Tell us what kind of was there many snooker halls around Edinburgh? Was it was it a big team in Scotland? Um, it was well when I first started playing. It was as, as I say, it was sort of the mid 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 eighties when the snooker was just starting to be very very popular on TV. Not, not probably didn't reach a peak until mid possibly the, the sort of. You know, mid, er, late eighties, early nineties, but um, yeah. certainly, as you said, yeah, yeah, the, the, the players like Jimmy White, Alex Higgins, uh, Steve Davis, um, all, 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 all these big names were, were starting to bring snooker into, into the public eye. And like they went on, like as I said, it was it was it was a big team back then because of course you had the dirt, and then the snooker took over, and like there was many great matches. Like for you, you know, as a junior player, you done quite well. Um, I think you won your first kind of major. It was nineteen eighty seven. It was the Grand Prix, I believe, against Dennis Taylor. Um, you beat yeah. him ten seven. So, what did that feel like? You know, getting that first big win under the under the belt. Uh, yeah, it was amazing. And, and I mean, also in that event, that was, that was the first time I'd ever beaten Steve Davis, who was the number one player. Um, it was the yeah. first time I'd ever beaten him in a, in, in a major event. So, so two two big um, sort of stepping stones, and to, you know, to start my career off. Um, as I say, once I beat Steve for the first time, that that sort of took the took the pressure off me and, 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 and I realised then that I could go on and be, and, and be the number one player. And you did that in style and of course that first world title win in 1990 against uh, you know, the great Jimmy White, uh, you beat him 18-12 that year. Uh, you know, what did it feel like winning that first world title because obviously you know, when, when you start out with that you know, snoop table at home and stuff, you know, and you get you get the use of it. Like, is it is this something that you you know was that your your greatest achievement to win that first world title, or would it would, it, would have been you know? Um, yeah, I mean, I, used, I did I did sort of various um, you know when my current professional at sixteen, various sort of media interviews, newspaper interviews in Scotland and stuff, and and they sort of said, what's your ambition? And, and I said, well, I want to be world champion by the time I'm twenty one. Um, and I think uh, you know a few people sort of like laughed and, and sort of said, oh, okay, it's all right saying that, but. I mean, Scott in Scotland didn't really have a big history of, of, of top snooker players, um, yeah. but to actually go ahead and go ahead and do that and win win the world championship at 21, uh, and as you know, I think I'm still the youngest uh, to this day to do it, um, yeah. was was obviously my, you know my, my greatest ambition, and, and and I think when I won the semi final, I became world number one. So, so both 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 my both my goals were achieved in, in that one world championship, which was fantastic. Good stuff. I think you you played so many like uh, amazing players over the years, but for you, like you know, when you were younger, who was your um who was your inspiration as a snooker player? Um, well, when I first started playing, I like I love watching uh, Jimmy because he played the sort of flare shots. Um, yeah. So the, I mean, the way the, the way I learned was was I I'd sort of watch you know watch TV matches and then try and copy the shots on my table. Uh, even even though it was a real a, a small toy table, I still try. Um, so obviously, I liked the way he played the game. But as, as soon as I got serious um, about being being a professional and, and and being successful, there was only one man to sort of. Uh, not copy, but sort of model my career on, and that was Steve Davis because he he was a dominant player. He was world number one, and and, and he was a, he was a, just a winning machine, and that's what I wanted to be. And like you know, earlier on in the career, like, but you get starstruck. So like you know, when you won that Grand Prix and you beat Dennis Taylor, but of course you beat Steve Davis on the way. Would you? Was there any bit of nerves there? Was it kind of like surreal moment, or was it just uh, you know you had the confidence and you know you knew you could do it? Uh, not, not by then, not by the time because I, I was eighteen then, so I, yeah. I, I sort of I'd lost that. But certainly when I first turned professional at sixteen, when you first come up again. 
you know, your, your, your sort of heroes, as it were, you know, playing the likes of Jimmy or Steve or Alex Higgins and, and these famous players. Yeah, when I first turned professional, I was I was a bit overawed. Um, yeah. But you, you soon you soon lose that feeling if you if, if you if you've got it inside you, you want to be the best. You soon you soon have to get rid of that. Of course, and um, of course, we first seen you on BBC. It was roughly you remember Pop Black. You were in the BBC Junior version of that. Yeah. What was that like? I yeah. remember seeing some footage over the years. Um, my dad showed me, but it was pretty awesome. You never really changed. You still have that uh, <laughs> yeah. that eye of the tiger, as we say. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I qualified to be in Junior Pop Black by winning the British Under-16 Championship when I was 14. Um, well, I was actually well, almost well, still 13, but um, Junior Pop Black, by the time that was filmed, I turned 14. Um, but I loved every minute of it, and it's, it's the sort of thing through my career that I've always sort of played my best in, in, in the sort of big occasions. I've never been you know, nervous about, you know, it's, it's the first time I played at the Crucible or the first time... You know, on, on TV, I, I was never faced by it. I just enjoyed it. That's a good way to be. And, of course, we, you know, we had a big shot in a big break. That was, like, when I remember when I was younger, a big break was massive. But do you think, like, you know, we need more kind of shows like this? Or do you think like, times have changed so much that it's just something, you know, that phases out? Or? Um, I think big break came along at a time when snooker was so popular. Um, yeah. I think, you know, I, th I think snooker is still very popular on TV. The, the BBC course. still get great audiences. But um, yeah. it's certainly not what it was. I, I think... It was pre Sky TV um, that Snooker was, you know, when, when obviously the, 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 the Taylor or Davis final got 18 million. Um, yeah. Now, obviously, you've got so, much, so many more ch uh, channels and sports to watch on TV, and um, so yeah. it's diluted it a little bit. But it's, um, but it's still popular. But I, I don't, I don't think we'll see the likes of sort of big break again. No, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Snooker's popular enough possibly to, to, to warrant that. Yeah. Well, times have changed. It's the same with everything, like with music, anything. Like it's just the generation now. It's, it's, it's completely different. But uh, I'm glad we had the days back then where we could watch that and remember it. Uh, for you, Stephen, what was your like? I know you've got so many um, great matches. Would there be any match in particular uh, the fans want to know that would stand out for you as your greatest ever match? Um. I mean, apart from, I mean, obvious ones to say, like, world championships and, and, and you know, masters championships and things like that, but I won, I won a, 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 a UK title, um, I beat Ken Doherty, you know, obviously your, your Irish colleague, in, in, in the final, yeah. uh, I, th I think it was 10-7, I actually made seven centuries in the final, um, yeah, I remember so, that so, I mean, although, although I lost seven frames, it was still some of the best snooker I ever played in a final, um, it, it was sort of like if I didn't make a century, I would lose the frame sort of thing. I wasn't interested in the scrappy frames, but um, but yes, uh, that 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 goes down as one of my best performances. Epic. We had a question from Greg. Greg says, "Can you remember when you ever got your first one four seven? So you've got eleven on record in tournament, but can you remember the first ever time you got a, a one four seven? And what age were you? I was fourteen. Uh, I was fourteen. Uh, my first my first uh, century was one hundred and two. That was when I was thirteen. Um, and uh, my, my first one four seven was at fourteen. You're you're coming out into the commentary. I must say you're a very good uh, commentator with BBC and stuff. How are you finding that at the moment? Kind of you know relaxing and watching you know the snooker players play instead of actually being involved. Yeah, it's it's, it's good. I, I like it. I mean, there's some there's some um, matches that are, that are not 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 you know some boring matches that the, 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 the standards not so great and and you and you, and you get sometimes you get a bit frustrated watching it. Um, and and, and uh, but but it, yeah, it's, it's, I suppose it's like a second prize after playing. You know, you still still get to be involved in, in in places like the Crucible. It's great, and I must say you do a fantastic job. And of course, you did retire, unfortunately for us, in uh, 2012. We were all absolutely gutted, to be honest, because um, you know, snooker without Stephen Hendry, it's it's strange. Now, over the years, of course, we're glad we get to see you on the TV doing the commentary, but is there any possibility in the future that you could come back, or is it just it's not for you anymore? Um, no, it's, it's not for me. Um, I mean, there, there, I, might, I might one day play one, one, you know, one or two maybe events, um, for, yeah. little, small foreign events, but um, unfortunately I did have a wild card the last couple of years to, to enter things if I wanted, but the, the WCA has taken that back off me. Um, yeah. So, so, so even, even if I wanted to, I'm, I'm not able to play now, but um, I, do, I do miss it sometimes. Um, and and I'll, I'll always I'll always play exhibitions. I'll, I'll always love love playing snooker because it's been my life. Of course. And I heard you're you're a handy golf player and poker player. I've seen you on the TV a few times playing poker. Are you still kind of active with the with the poker and the golf? No, I haven't played poker for a long time. I got I got to the stage where I realised how bad I was, and it was costing me too much money. <laughs> that's, that's an honest man, honest word. And of course, just before we go, Stephen, for all the younger lads entering the snooker halls, because you know it's there's still lots of snooker halls operating around around the world. What kind of advice can you give them? Like, you know, what's what's the best advice? The best advice I could, I could give is, is is hard work, basically. Um, you know, even even if you're the most talented player in the world, unless unless you work out and and put the errors in. Um, 
you know, you're, you're not, you're not going to have success. So the, the best advice I could give is just if you have a talent and you are serious about it, and it's not just snooker, this is any sport or any job, you've got, you've got to work at it. I have to ask you, just because I've always been, because I've played snooker over the years myself, like, what's the most you practice in one day? Like, have you often put in 10, 12 hours practice, like, or is it, you know, even Oh, no, more? no, 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 not, not as long as that, no. I, th- I think pro- probably maybe seven hours is probably the most I've played in a day. Seven hours, that's, that's pretty, that's, that's, that's a long time as well, like, so. Yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome. And just a quick question, you know, I know you do a lot of tours of Ireland. I've seen you, I, I personally met you myself over the years. Uh, we hope to see you back in Cork soon. Because uh, I know you've been to Cork a number of times over the years. Uh, yeah. Cork always misses you, so uh, fingers crossed we can we can get you back to Cork soon. Yeah, I'd love to come back. Thank you. Good stuff, Stephen. An absolute honour. We'll speak to you, no doubt, in the next couple of months. Uh, we thank you for taking the time to speak to us here on Sports Matters. You're very welcome.